All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Today we're going to be talking about CNC files. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about some of the files that I've made, some of the things that I've been making with the CNC, and where did I come up with the files, where do I get the files, and truthfully, guys, I finally got to the point where I can make my own basic files. Now, I am still a novice when it comes to uh, designing, but I'm getting there. So if that's something you're into, uh, making your own files for your CNC, maybe you don't have a four foot by four foot. Maybe you have a smaller CNC. The principle is the same. The procedure is basically the same. And I'll kind of show you the steps. And this is gonna be just kind of a high flyover of how I go about designing uh, files for simple stuff like this. And this is kind of something that my wife came up with we were walking through Hobby Lobby, and of course she sees things and goes, hey, couldn't you make something like that? And of course, guys, the, the gauntlet has been thrown, and I have to create these things. So I came home, figured out how to make it, and uh, after a couple of tries, first of which wasn't great, but it did work out, I was able to uh, come up with a file and make this thing relatively easy. Uh, the only real expense to me was the material, and I do it for fun, so. No big loss. But if you want to see how to create something simple like this for yourself, fully customizable, stick around and we're going to get over on the computer and we're going to do just that. All right, guys, so when it comes to CNC's, I'm just gonna give you a quick little history in case you're not familiar. I started out with a Sane Smart Jinmitsu 4040 Pro. That was the very first CNC that I ever had. I ran Easel with it for a while, and if you're just getting into it, Easel does have some pretty easy features. They kind of help you along. Uh, it's, it's very simplistic to uh, run the machine with, has a wide variety of machine capabilities as far as the number of machines that it works with. Uh, but as soon as I kind of got my feet wet and got into it, I realized that I needed more as far as the creative tools that I was used to uh, with Lightburn and, and some of the laser programs that I run. And that's when I moved over to uh, VCarve. Now, VCarve, the desktop, just VCarve desktop version, is a very capable software and up to a certain size machine, it's really all you need. There are some other features and stuff you get with VCarve Pro that you're not gonna have with the regular VCarve desktop. But for most applications, if you have a small CNC, whether it be the 6050 from Sage Smart all the way up to you know, a 32 by 32 shape of code, one of the threes or fours or whatever, you're gonna be able to design a lot of the same stuff in that. The original design that I created on this software, on the, this machine for this particular item, I created in the VCarve desktop. Uh, it wasn't until recently that I upgraded to VCarve Pro and uh, that was just because with VCarve Desktop, you're limited to like 525, I think it is, don't quote me on that, uh, but there is a limit to how big you can go with your designs. And so with me having the new Shapeco, I had to have four foot by four foot capacity, and so I had to upgrade to VCarve Pro, and that's what we'll be using today to show you how to design this. But the tools and the basic stuff that we're gonna be using, they exist as well in the VCarve Desktop version. So. Just wanted to cover that before we get started, and we're gonna move over to the computer and show you the process. All right, so I'm over at the computer now, and we're about to dive into VCarve, but before we do, guys, I wanna show you the photo that was the inspiration for this project. Uh, like I said, a lot of times, that's where I come up with ideas for projects, is just to see what some of the big box stores, or the big stores, so to speak, uh, are selling, and when they're selling it. So check this out. This was my inspiration, and then we'll get straight into design. So this is a picture that I popped while I was in Hobby Lobby using my glasses, uh, just so that I'd be able to have a reference uh, as to how they laid it out. Now the font is different on mine as well as the, the border is a little different. This thing, if you can see it, uh, this one more or less, they took uh, little, little balls, like little wooden balls and cut them in half and glued them to the piece of material, which I guess that works, but that seems very time consuming. So I opted to go with a rope design and engrave mine into the uh, into the to the design. So that's what that is. And uh, so let's close this out, and we will get over to VCarve. And like I said, I'm using the uh, VCarve Pro 11.5 version. Uh, they're going to be coming out with a version 12 here soon. Uh, but 
the first thing that you have to do guys is determine what size you want your project and what size your material is. Now we're just going to be making this up. So as we go, so I'm going to say, create a new file. Uh, the first part of it is going to be uh, setting up your material. Uh, we're going to be doing a single sided job. You could do double, but that'll be a video for another, another day guys. Uh, and we'll make this one just to keep it simple. I'm going to make it like, 400 millimeters wide and we'll do 250 tall and of course you're going to need to measure your material of course and uh, set the thickness here now you can always if you're going to be using varying materials I do this a lot is just reopen the file later uh, change the material thickness if you're using a different kind of plywood or a thicker thinner plywood you can adjust this and uh, change the tool pass and you can you know retool it to work with different materials Oh, I actually have to do that a lot, but typically speaking, we're just going to leave the 12 millimeter in there. That's about a half inch piece of plywood, which is what I would use for this project. Uh, for the appearance, uh, appearance, <laughs> for the appearance of the material, uh, we'll just do, we'll say pine, just a just a pine wood. That'll be fine. That'll work. So I'm going to hit OK. And basically that's laid out your work area. It's assuming that this is the material that you're going to be engraving. Uh, the 3D view, basically you're going to have a piece of wood until you put designs on it. So going back over into the 2D view mode, that's where you're going to do all your designing. I'm going to go ahead and open up over here. I'm going to open up these uh, little box and I'm going to hit this little pin button right there. Uh, it looks like a push pin to kind of hold that in place because if not it, it keeps like going away and I do not want it to go away I want to keep it out here where I can see it so we're good all right so I changed my mouse over I hope this helps maybe it'll make it a little easier to see some folks had complained that sometimes the mouse is hard to see I feel like that's a much larger easier to see mouse and I've even got it set to where it contrasts with whatever I'm hovering over so maybe maybe that'll work so it's like a little chameleon mouse now so we'll, we'll see if that, uh, if that works any better. So, all right. So for this design that I built, one of the first things that I, that I had to do was decide the shape. Uh, and the way that I did that is I come up here and just basically created an ellipse and figured out exactly how big I wanted it to be. And then move it Oh, this big mouse is really messing with me though, guys. Uh, Put it into my work area and you know just figure out exactly how you want it laid out and how big you want it we'll make this a little bigger uh the bigger that a cnc job is a lot of times the easier the detail is to it is to get the detail without having to go with a really really tiny bit uh, and so that's that's something you have to consider too is the smallest detail on your engrave is going to be dictated by the diameter of the, the bit. Uh, the thicker the bit, the less uh, high resolution your image can be. And so we got that laid out there. Uh, before we get too far into anything else, I'll go ahead and show you over here on the uh, clip art. This is where a lot of stuff, uh, VCarve includes a lot of different designs as well as they have like an online store that you can download different stuff from if you're looking for something for a special occasion. And the way that I went in here and just kind of looked through it was I went to the borders. And this is uh, actually, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this line all the way out to the outside of the design. Uh, the one thing that I will say is this is where I kind of messed up on the original one that I did. And that I left a little too much room between the 3D graphic and the edge. And although there is a way and i'm going to try to show you in this one that you can kind of clear out some of this material you want to try to get this as close to the edge as possible all right so looks like i'm good on that side like i said a lot of this you know it's going to be tiny little pieces of material so technically a little bit of uh sanding will knock any of that off if you don't get it exactly right and so what i did from there is go here i'm going to use the offset tool i'm going to go inward uh, we'll say 30 millimeters 
see what that looks like so that gives you the inner so I think uh, I think I'd rather go 25 and yeah we'll do 25 so I'm gonna keep the 25 and trash the 30 and so that gives you the outer boundary all right so now that we have the basic uh, layout of the design uh, I'm gonna take this little guy here and let's just select everything and just kind of move it over into the middle of the work area just because you know it bothers me if it's not all right so the next thing that we need to do is add some text to it so we'll be using the text tool here and i'm gonna be doing welcome and what i have learned with these script letters is that it's better to use the lowercase lettering uh, because if you use uppercase it will separate the letters so i'm gonna put welcome in there uh, one thing that you'll notice with vcarv is when you bring in this letter in, you can see it's basically letters that are overlapped but each letter is kind of its own individual shape they're just grouped uh, so with it like this it's hard when you start welding stuff together so what i like to do is just select the text before i move it move further uh, go over here to the weld tool and weld all those little individual lines together and uh, there you go so now if you notice we don't have the we don't have the lines between the letters so now it's just one con continual shape then we'll go over here select everything and group that together now once i got that done now this is a uh, oh didn't mean to do that this is kind of one continual shape so now we can join it to the other shape as needed. I'm going to have to make sure that my letter overlaps the frame because if I don't, of course, the letters will just fall right out of the design. Uh, once I get that basically where I want it, what I'm going to do is go in here. I'm going to select that one, hold shift, select this outer line, and I'm going to use the alignment tool over here just to make sure I've got it centered uh, on the other one. All right, so now we've got all of the elements of the design pretty much in here. All right, guys, had a little mix up with the record button, so I'm having to redo this segment if you notice any small anomalies. But uh, the next part of the step is gonna be to join the text with the frame, because I want this to be one continual piece, I'm gonna cut it out of one piece of material. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna select the larger shape, which is this one here. Uh, and before I do that, though, I'm gonna need to and I'll show you why this will all make sense in a minute. I'm going to copy this guy, the text in the middle. I'm going to select the outer shape. All right. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to select the inner shape. And once I do that, I'm going to use the little subtract boolean to subtract the text from out the middle of this big, you know, elliptical circle here. Uh, once I do that, if you notice now the text kind of blends in with the, the frame. And so I want to add a little lines around through here to kind of help outline the text so that it, you know, looks like it's a, a piece and not part of the uh, background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the text back in there. Uh, and the thing with VCarve is if you copy and paste, it pastes it right back where you copied it from. So that comes in handy for doing stuff like this. The next thing that I need to do is I need to go over here to my node editing tool. It's going to tell you that it needs to ungroup them because it is grouped with these little inserts and stuff. I'm going to hit yes. All right. From trial and error, I have learned that like right here, if I want this line to come all the way around, instead of breaking the line there, I've got to break it on up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this line and by ho hovering over the line and hitting the D right there. So when I do that, basically I just put a break in that line i'm going to do the same thing down here but i'm going to do it out here past the second the whichever the next node is past my line just give myself a little bit of room and i'll break it right there and what i'm doing is causing it to leave this line but i'm going to remove the rest of them uh to uh to make myself a little just a little profile to mark that material right there and then i'm going to go like let's say right here I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna delete that section of line. Then I'm gonna come over here, do the same thing here, as well as here. And you gotta wait until the little squiggly line shows up before it'll work. And then here. So now that I've done that, I should have separated 
this line here is separate from those smaller lines. So like all this right here, I can remove. And now I have a small line there, small line there, and one there. And those will be assigned tool paths in order to make this appear that these letters are still cut from the material, even though they're still attached. So I kind of messed up on that part of the video. So I had to redo it, but we got through it. So now I should have these little pieces on the inside are going to be here too. So I've got to go through and make sure I get all of those out. And like I said, guys, there's probably easier ways. I'm steadily learning. So I think that's all of it. <laughs> I hope that's all of it. One way you can check is take and select like that little area. And occasionally I'll cheat like this and I'll just move it and make sure that all the pieces move and then grab this one and move it and make sure all the pieces move. And you can see back here, we still have little parts of that E that are still showing up. So I'm just gonna backspace or undo and go back and see if I can get this one little, there it goes, that one little piece of line right there and get that taken out of there. So now I can, uh, I said do the same thing just move this over click on this one move this over and that part of the e right there actually has to stay i just don't want two of them so yeah it looks like i got rid of everything that needed to go so i'm going to close that and just undo all of my tearing apart of my design and i think we're good uh looks like but there's probably a way that I could like click this one and hide it. I haven't figured that out yet. So <laughs> as I learn, maybe I'll be able to. Uh, but that would be that would be awesome if I could if I could you know do that or figure out exactly how to go about it. Because uh, those lines will hide on top of each other when you especially when you're cutting stuff apart like this and put it back together. So once I get that done, then we've just got to assign the. Uh, the tool pass to it. For tool pass, of course, uh, this is gonna be a 3D engrave. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna go over here and do a 3D finishing pass on it. Uh, the, the material is 12 millimeters. So we're gonna leave that be because this does kind of roll the edges. Uh, material surface, you can actually go below the surface if you want to, or you can start exactly on the surface. It, it just depends on how deep you want it to be. Uh, the rapid Z moves, I'm going to leave those at about 10 uh, so that we make sure nothing happens to uh, the bit as it's going over the top of the material. You can increase this or decrease this, whichever you see fit. So all in all, I think I'm just going to leave all of this alone hit okay and then we'll go in here select the bit that i'll be using and make sure i've got the correct machine selected i'm gonna go over to my genie bits uh and i'm gonna go to the skinny genie which is the bit that i've been using on these and hit select uh let me take that out of there you can do the model boundary uh Material boundary, selected vector, blah, blah, blah. All of that good stuff. You can actually even do a boundary offset. And I'm going to put two millimeters in the boundary offset on this one in an attempt to make sure I get a clean edge all the way past this line right here so I don't have any sanding or anything to do to get rid of little tiny pieces of material uh, down through here. So once we do that, I'm going to leave it named 3D Finish. And I'm going to hit Calculate. It'll take it just a second to calculate it. You can go in here and I'm gonna preview all tool paths and you can see what has happened by me doing that offset. It's actually coming out and in from that 3D. So once we put that cut line in, the, the goal here, my hope is that that cut line for the profile will actually be in this flat area right here to eliminate any little pieces sticking up or anything. Uh, that was the problem I had with my very first run at this. So next, I'm going to select that guy right there, the outside cut. 
close this window and we're going to change this to a profile toolpath. And I'm going to set this guy to be a cut. So I'm going to be using the distance of our material and you can use whichever bit you want to. I've got the, the Jenny down cut bit on there. Uh, that'll work for me. It's an outside cut, no definition needed. So that'll work. Uh, I'm going to do it outside of this line because it is a quarter inch bit. So this is where, unlike lasers, you have to consider this is a quarter inch bit. So if I tell it to go on this line right here, I'm going to lose an eighth of an inch material on this side and an eighth of an inch material on this side. But if I tell it to do the outside, then the shoulder of the bit is going to run that line right there, which should be about where we want it. Uh, I will be adding ramps to the tool path since this is a <clears throat> down cut bit just to, to kind of keep it from smoking or scorching anything as it <laughs> dives into the material. Uh, adding, adding tabs here and the way you're going to go to do that is you can do constant tabs like this or you can uh, add them however you want. With this, it's a round shape. It's not really a bad spot to put them. I can just go four constant number of tabs and hit close. And so now I've got tabs. Uh, this size seems to work pretty good for me. I use a uh, DeWalt oscillating saw with a little small blade on it to cut those loose. So I'm really not concerned with whether they're you know, a little bigger than usual. You do want to watch when you're putting tabs and make sure you don't put them in any bad spots to be trying to cut. Uh, so I'm going to calculate that tool path. And I'm going to go over here. I like to leave these off. Uh, reset the preview just for kicks and preview all tool paths. And as you can see, we did a pretty good job of cleaning the, uh, the edge right there. It's going to come up all the way to where it overlaps with that offset that we did from the 3D uh, engrave. And so that worked out. If, if you don't, what you'll see is right in here, you'll have little tiny pieces of material that'll be left by this 3D carve. So that was the problem I had the first time and I had to clean it up with the bandsaw and it just wound up looking yucky. Uh, so I decided not to do that anymore. Uh, before I move, I'm going to rename these. Uh, this is going to be the outer cut. And I can just leave that 3D finished. That's the only 3D element to this design. So it's not like I'm going to get confused. So got that done. Uh, oh, you know what I just realized though? By using a quarter inch bit there, and this is something else you have to consider with CNC's. If I use that quarter inch bit there, then when I go to cut this out, I'm going to have to do a bit change. I don't want to do a bit change. So we're going to go back in here and change this bit over to the eighth inch uh, Slim Jenny, which is an eighth inch uh, end mill. So same thing though, because I did this on the outside of that line, nothing changes as far as my curve or anything. So nothing to consider there. I'm just going to recalculate that and reset the preview and I'll show you what a difference it does actually make uh, when you're using that thinner bit. You can see there's not nearly as big a gap outside of our design now because this bit is half the size of the other one, but it's gonna be running outside. So the diameter of the bit on this particular cut is not going to matter. So going back to 2D view, I'm glad I thought about that because had I not, then uh, <laughs> I would have really hated myself doing that bit change. So I'm going to select the top half of this, all of these little lines here that need to be cut out, anything that needs to be cut out, I'm going to select those and then the bottom part. All right. Once we get all of the cutouts selected, then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do another profile tool path. All right. Here's where some of these designs are probably going to be manipulated a little bit by the software because this is a little smaller than what I made mine. So you're probably going to, we're probably going to see a little bit of the rounding of corners and whatnot from the line work, like say for here, for instance, there's no way to make that cut with an eighth inch bit. So the software is going to kind of round that corner to allow it to do it with the eighth inch bit. So that is uh something that we need to uh, take into consideration. And also on all of these lines, I'm gonna be running outside as well. 
So I could have set it with this one, but it's going to do them all one right behind the other as long as the bit's the same. So, so we're going to run the same bit and run it outside again. Uh, I'm going to add a few tabs. Uh, with this, I'm going to kind of customize my tab selection because I don't want it to just put them in random spots. And the reason that you need tabs, especially with this stuff, is these little pieces are going to come out. Now, with these little guys, these are tough. Uh, you can put a tab, and we'll go ahead and put one in there. But a lot of times, I'll just let them, I'll just let them sit there. Uh, these pieces aren't really big enough to uh, cause a problem, but sometimes they do get to get chunked around or fly places. So I've got me some tabs put in there to kind of secure all the moving parts, unless I'm overlooking something. So we should be good on that. And I'll just have to cut all those off. I'm going to add ramps to it, of course. And uh, I'm going to name this one Interior Cuts. And calculate it. All right, so now we get to see what everything's going to look like once we run that. And as you can see, <laughs> that didn't work out. <laughs> so... So that is not the desired effect. So we're going to have to go back to the drawing board, right? Well, what can we change? Well, the kerf of the bit. So the way that we ran it, if you look, it's, it's just chewing everything up instead of leaving the parts that we want it to, to, to leave. So uh, we're going to have to change that. All right. And the reason for that with this particular file, guys, is because technically this is one shape and this is one shape. So what is happening is it's running the outside of this shape, which puts it going through here, which is inside the letters. So like I said, it's not like lasers. Uh, with the CNC, you have to account for where the bit is going to be. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this again. Put them all back in here into my selection for this tool line. And I'm going to change this from outside to inside. And then recalculate my tool pass. Now I'm going to reset this whole preview. Give us a clean slate to work with here. Uh, and preview it now. And so that is a lot more becoming of what we were wanting. So as you can see, uh, a lot of these, because of the size of the bit, the tabs are basically only going to be holding like that one tabs. Only thing's going to only one that's going to be holding anything. The others are not holding anything. Those little pieces of material are going to fly out of there, probably get sucked up by the chip collection and be done with. So we can take all the tabs out. I would say, except for the one in the O here, just to hang on to that little piece there. Uh, probably wouldn't hurt to throw one on this. So. I can go back to my interior cut, edit the tabs, and hover over that one and click. When you hover over them and click, it will, well, I actually did put a tab there. Oh, it's this piece. So that tab wasn't needed. Uh, so that's going to put a tab on that one and a tab on this one. And so we should be good recalculating. And that's why I like this preview tool with... Uh, V carve is because you kind of get to see where you're going to mess up before you mess up and it gives you an opportunity to fix it. See those little pieces there aren't big enough to really concern ourselves with the, the problem would come in when the, when the bit gets over here, it's going to keep that piece. And if it tries to go around, sometimes these pieces can get in a bind and just cause havoc. These little small pieces generally are going to get knocked around a couple of times, maybe uh, if they don't just get instantly pulled up into the dust collection. So we should be good with that. So that part is good. The only thing, if you'll notice, our letters are a little deformed because they're missing parts. But we took steps to uh, fix that. And we're going to go look at that right quick and uh, get that knocked out as well. So I'm going to close that out, go back to my 2D view. Uh, just click anywhere in the workspace. I'm going to select that little guy there, uh, this one, and that one. And what I'm going to do with those guys is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to set a profile for them. Now, because if you look at the way this letter runs, 
What I want to do is I want it to look like this letter continues onto this piece of material and turns. So that means that the tool, if I run the tool path on this line, I'm going to be cutting off half of the bottom of this letter. So, and being that this is a, it's not, it's a line, it's, it's technically, you're going to be going right and left, not inside or outside. Reset, preview all. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's the basics of how I designed that file. And if you want to look at the backside, uh, once this comes off, these will have to be cut off with my little uh, tool that I use to cut the tabs. But those, like I said, those are necessary to hold pieces to keep the bit from binding and it from slinging pieces of material around uh, in the workspace. Uh, you can use, depending on your machine, smaller bits and have, you know, different results. Uh, but all in all, that is the basic layout of how I came up with the design that, that I showed you in the beginning of the video. <clears throat> and uh, it worked pretty well. I do wish there was an option that I could knock these pieces out of, like for a final product view, I guess you could say. But you kind of have to use your imagination and just remove those on your own. But uh, But, yeah. All in all, I think that would, would work really well, especially with that 18-inch bit. Of course, if you change it to a quarter, uh, not so much. All right, so if we wanted to redo this, and let's say we wanted to make this bigger. We had this design, we had created it, but now we want to use the same type of material, but a larger piece. Because like I said, when we built this one, we didn't build it all that big. We're looking at 400 by uh, 250. So what I can do is I would go back and you can go over here at any time. Let's say if you want to burn another one of these or cut another one of these, I can go to my sheets. And uh, let's say for this particular design, I had a piece of material that we're going to say is 800 by 400. And that was going to be the size, you know, material that I had. And I wanted this to be bigger. So what you would do basically is you don't have to reinvent this entire design of course uh you're just going to select everything in the design and then i'm going to go over to transform the size you're going to want to make sure that x and y uh, are proportionate right here so that when you increase it your lines increase the same uh, i'm going to turn the auto z scale off because i'm still using the same thickness of material so I don't want to change any of that. And what I would do is say, if I wanted to make this 600 millimeters instead of what it was, then I would just change that to 600. This is going to automatically adjust the height and hit apply. Now, I'm going to have to reposition this because obviously since my material changed, uh, it is not where it needs to be. Now, before you get too carried away, you got to remember we have tool lines. Uh, it's not like a laser. We actually have tool lines that are factored into this. So if I show you where our tool lines are, they still reflect the original size of the engrave. So we're going to have to redo the tool lines and simply go up tool pass, recalculate all tool pass, and the computer is going to evaluate them and recalculate them based on where the shapes are. But other than that, everything is going to remain the same. Now, notice right here where before, because of the size of the engrave that we had this was rounded but now because we've made it larger that eighth inch bit is actually able to come into these corners and kind of make it you know look more like a corner and we'll go to 3d view so you can get a better look at this um so i'm gonna go ahead and preview the tool paths well <laughs> preview all tool paths and you'll be able to see it more here uh because you've got a little sharper edges in some of these, they're not nearly as rounded as they were because it's a lot larger graphic. So that's where that's where with CNC's coming from lasers to CNC's, the the keeping up with the bit, the width of the bit, and what you can do with a certain size bit, uh, it does make a big difference. But so now we have a much larger sign than what we had before, and uh, all is well. So this size is a little. <laughs> bigger than what most people would want, but there you go. So just so that we don't lose, lose out any steps, part of being able to send this over to the machine is you have to have the proper uh, post-processor set up so that the computer knows to take 
this design and what language to use to communicate it to the machine so that the machine can do it properly. Now, some of these icons you will not have if you don't have uh, the pro version of VCarve. I didn't have these until recently when I up updated. Uh, but one cool thing that you do have is you can actually go in here and look at the time that it would take to do the engrave. Uh, this is all going to be dependent on your tool that you're using and the speeds and feeds. Uh, you can go slower, faster, less detail, more detail. And especially with like this 3D engrave, it's going to take a quite a while because I'm using a 16th inch bit and I made this design so much bigger. So you're looking at you know, two hours and 45 minutes for this with it in the current shape that it's in. So if we wanted to go back and resize this thing down to 400 wide, apply that. All right, so now I've got to recalculate my tool paths again. And once I do that, you'll see, obviously, based on the size of the engrave, the time is going to be significantly quicker. Uh, so all those speeds and feeds and everything are going to make a big difference. Uh, there's countless things that you can do to uh, increase the speed. But anyway, this gives you a pretty good uh, base idea of how long it's going to take. And then once you get ready to ex export the file to the machine, like you can do several different methods uh what you're gonna have to do is each layer that uses a different bit you can use like with the shape of co i actually can do bit changes during a design i prefer running it old school because that's just the way i'm used to with the other machines so normally what i will do is just do selected tool paths and save them to one file and so like this is this one uses the slim genie so what I would do is come down here and select the 3D finish, which is going to be the rope. And I would save that to one toolpath. When you hit save the toolpath, it's going to use the machine data that you have here and the post processor that you have selected uh, to figure out what to do with that file. And I'm just going to save this into my downloads folder and you can name this whatever. Uh, I typically do like the project. So I would do like uh, rope sign and then I would do 3D finish. Well, I put 2D instead of 3D and that would let me know. And you can even if you if you're if you're like me and you're still trying to learn all the bit numbers and all that, uh, you can you can put what bit you use or whatever in the name to remind you. Uh, when you load the file into the software to, to be done. And then you would just hit save and it would save that file. Uh, same thing, you can go over to those three. And then you're going to come up here and change that to visible tool pass, which is going to be the three that you have selected. Uh, making them visible is simply checking and unchecking the boxes. So you'll see that all three of those use the same bit. So that doesn't mean I'm going to have a bit change in there. So I can go over here, make sure those are selected correctly, save, and then I can name this one just like I did the other one. I would name it rope sign and then do cuts. And if I wanted to, I could name it, you know, the bit number uh, eighth inch bit or slim gen or whatever to, to remind me which bit that I'll be using. Uh, usually when I'm doing this, I, I kind of either remember which bit is what or just leave the program open so I can look in here and then you would hit save. Uh, and assuming that you save those to a thumb drive or SD card or whatever, then you would take it over to the other computer or controller, whichever machine you may have, and you could execute it from there. Uh, with my setup, what I have, and this is uh, something that, you know, you may or may not want to do. I've got my machine set up to where on my CNC machine over there, I have a little computer that controls the CNC machine. I have a shared folder that I can access from this computer. So what I would do, uh, basically, instead of saving them in here, I can go and just access that computer directly and paste them onto it or just save them directly onto it and that eliminates me having to use a thumb drive or sd card or email or anything to send them over to that computer uh, and i just did that using a shared folder that is on the machine that operates uh the cnc i'm going to delete those before i 
think that's my other one. I've already got that guy on here. Uh, this is this is where you'd see where I did my welcome sign. This is the one that I, that I painted yellow. Uh, this is a Slim Jim, uh, Slim Jim down cut, and then 3D finish. So as long as I, when I load this, as long as I read the name of the file, I know what bit to put in there. Uh, it'll tell you on the screen, bit one, bit two, bit three. But currently, I don't have all of my signage and stuff set up to where I can remember all that. And so I cheat and put it in the file name. So just a little uh, tip for you on how I do it there. But that's that's the gist of it, guys. Like I said, I'm not a professional with VCAR by no means. I've been bringing you guys along along the way. Uh, I'm getting better. The more I do, the more I learn, and the more I mess up, the more I learn. So never be afraid to make mistakes because that is one of the parts of the learning curve. Right, guys so i hope this kind of helps give you an idea of what is capable using uh, vcar whether you're using desktop or pro and a, a good cnc whether you have like i said the 6050 the shape co 5 pro onefinity regardless of the machine as long as you operate inside the parameters as far as your speeds and feeds once you get all that stuff figured out the the file can be use on any or all of the different machines as long as the work area is compatible with it but that's one thing that that i like about cnc's is it gives me another level of being able to create as far as being able to do those intricate cuts the 3d reliefs and stuff like that i really enjoy that uh, i'm still learning it and uh like i said it's going to be a long road ahead i'm sure because there's so many things that i haven't really gotten into uh, i am doing better uh, with my designs. I've started using the Genie bits uh, that Cadence Manufacturing makes. Um, I'm really digging those bits. So uh, if you're into the CNC world and you wanna get some really nice bits, go check them out. I'll drop a link down below. Uh, also, like I said, there's gonna be a link to uh, Vectric where I get my software from down in the description as well. If you're interested in the software, uh, they do have a trial version. There are some limitations to the trial that you can, you can get and, and play with. Uh, but like I said, it adds a level of creativity to the projects that, you know, you may or may not have. Uh, my machine, the Shapeco Carbide 3D Creates, uh, has two different software. They have the Carbide Creates and the Carbide Motion. And I use Motion to run the machine uh, using the uh, post processor that I showed you in the video. And that allows me to use all the functions of the machine. But, you know, if you didn't want to buy the software, there are other ways of creating similar designs in the software that comes with the Shapoko. Now, I am still a rookie on it. I've got several more months experience with VCarve, and I haven't really sat down and taken the time to learn the software from Carbide, but that's just out of laziness and lack of time on my part. <laughs> but I have used it for, you know, some jobs, and it seems pretty, pretty easy to use and uh, fairly simple if you're new and you're in the Shapoko Carbide 3D uh, ecosystem, so to speak, you might want to give that a look. But for now, like I said, guys, that's that's where I'm at. Uh, like I said, basically, I'm learning how to create my files. I'm having to learn that the CNC's are slightly different than lasers when it comes to how you lay the file out. Uh, you do have a lot more concern with kerf because it's not a consistent kerf. It depends on the bit that you use, so you have to work that into your calculations when you're when you're laying everything out. But I hope the video helps guys. And uh, if this is something you're into, I'm hoping to have more content similar to this. So be sure that uh, you're subscribed to the channel. And if you're not, go ahead and uh, make that happen. But uh, until next time guys, be safe and have a good day.